Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. So we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some <laughs> hello, fun hello. things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant, and that's Pedro Mateus. We're getting a little bit of a late hello. start on the live stream <laughs> on the show recording because guess what? I'm playing around with new hardware, and it's, I'm not going to say it's smarter than me. It's not, but man. <laughs> Uh, definitely more obtuse. It, <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> what ended up getting was a Motu MK3 because I want to test that for interfacing Linux. And it's a really clever. I mean, it's got a Xilinx FPGA in it. I mean, it's got a lot of brains inside of it and with a bunch of other stuff because it can do EQ, compression, reverb, and all the Motu routing stuff, digital mixing. And technically, you can control it from the front of the interface, which is four push knobs that rotate. Technically, you can do it. Motu, in their wisdom, didn't even bother telling you how to do that in the manual. They're like, have at it. I mean, it's technically possible, but you really should use this software program that we have with all the EQs and compression and digital routing and all that. Nay, I don't have access to that. So I spent about 35 minutes over in the corner while these two were just chilling. I'm like, come on, work, work. And finally we got audio working in it again. Stay tuned for that. What's new with you, Jill? You got outside. Is the sun still there? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was uh, last weekend. Me and my husband were able to venture out in the world because we're two weeks after our second shot. So I went to the mall, saw family and friends, and had a great time. And I also... Got this new laptop, uh, and it's pink. It's pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, pink is one of the reasons why I got it. This is actually the MSI Prestige, uh, fourteen-inch laptop with a Core i seventh tenth gen Ultra HD IPS display and NVIDIA GeForce GTX sixteen fifty. And what is amazing about this is it's under three pounds at 2.83 pounds to be exact. And it is one of the, the slimmest and lightest gaming laptops available. And that was one of the reasons I wanted it for, for traveling, for work, <laughs> and, and because it was pink. Don't drop but it. Yes. I, don't drop yeah, it. That's don't, a whole don't, don't, you're going to drop it. Don't, it yeah, hold on some more, so it. you'll increase. It's so light. It's... Oh my gosh, because, you know, I have several gaming laptops, but they're all big, heavy beasts and uh, some of them weigh seven, eight pounds. So I needed something lighter for on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got Garuda Linux on it, one of my favorite uh, Arch distros. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying it. Well, I'm guessing the main reason you got it so you could uh, take the video card out of it. Yeah, no. Solder dong, though. <laughs> we yeah, it's solder dong. Times. That was a joke. What's new with you, Pedro Mateus? <laughs> uh, see, I, I, I don't have a new laptop, but I do have an old new laptop to me uh, <laughs> coming. So uh, I am going to get rid of the Yay. three laptops that I don't really use for anything anymore. Uh, it's the Dell E4200, the HP 820, uh, G8. G820 mm. Elite Book. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> and the Dell Latitude D620, which, uh, yeah, those three are the ones that I just don't really use for anything anymore. What I'm keeping the rest it? of them. <laughs> I'm going to put them on eBay. If I can't sell them, I'm going to start the bidding pretty low. And if I can't sell them at all, uh, I'm <laughs> going to leave them by the bin and then they will disappear. Like well, everything that I leave by the bin. <laughs> you can just put them outside the front door and put like, um, you know, a little sticker and be like, ah, give me five pounds for it. And somebody was stealing. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I don't need to do that. I could just <laughs> leave it next to the, uh, the bins in the parking lot. I just leave it there. And then sometimes I'll come back in the house to pick up the rest of the stuff and go back and it's, oh, it's already gone. Okay. All right. <laughs> Speaking of stuff that's gone, a little bit of talk about the IRC oh situation. I think this is genuinely going to be the last time we will address it on this show. <laughs> but Ding dong, the witch is dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. They got a thing <laughs> popped out. And like, the last remaining 1000 user community channel was seized by free known. Which one? Linux. Yes, that one. 22 years. And dude logged in, the founder. He's like, well, I've been kicked out. It's gone. Uh-oh. 
And of course, free notes like truck emoji. That's just how we roll, man. I mean, didn't you get the memo? <laughs> We're just doing that. Which ultimately in the long run didn't really affect anything after uh, what they did immediately after that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think at this point, no one was expecting really anything. Yes. And yeah, Pound Pound Linux was the channel. It's like you wanted, well, if you wanted to get told to RTFM and Stafu, uh, <laughs> that was usually the IRC channel you would go to. I read that yeah. little note and <laughs> shortly after that, LWN posted their thing. It's like, hey, there's a bit of turmoil at a free node IRC network. There are now rumors that the new Freenode owners are planning to drop their user database and start from scratch with a new code base, new owners. No, they wouldn't ever do yeah, uh, that. They, they did exactly yeah, that. They did. All Freenode yeah. channels and users <laughs> gone. All this is going to be in the show notes if you want to follow my little um, link path for everything. Yeah, the global notice that was sent out basically nuked it, started from scratch, and... I, I almost want to bet that they no longer have anyone who knew how to control the IRCD that they were running, and um, all the base, all the developers like we're not we're not going to help you do anything. And yeah, all channels, users completely non-existent. Any existing community which existed in Freenode, it's gone. And yeah, there's even a graph. What is it? Is Freenode dead yet? <laughs> Yeah, the website is, yeah. is freenodenetyet.com. <laughs> and yeah, you can see the graph and on the very top left it says yes. Yes, it is dead. Uh, because all the channels are, well, uh, all the channels were gone, but they're now, apparently someone's going back in and creating channels because, oh, hey, Freenode is, you know, <laughs> free of literally everything now. So yeah, it is... Good luck. <laughs> 127 oh users. Don't, yeah, I was going to say, man, don't besmirch all 127 people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I know that IRC is niche, but uh, Freenode now is just people watching the fire and they want like front row seats to the fire, I guess. What, we're talking about yeah. going from 49,000 connected users on um, the 14th to... 15th to 100 wow <laughs> <I> mean, yeah <laughs> and, and, and those that's for the those of us who haven't quit our memberships <laughs> no you, you don't have any no. memberships all your data's gone yeah, yeah I know. it's all gone <laughs> oh, I'm stuck yeah. a fork in it Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna auto connect so, i mean there is no point a lot of people are bouncing over to Libra.chat or OFTC.net. Those are the two um, popular ones. And of course, somebody like even on the stream delay, I'm, we're going to get the, um, what, what, what's the uh, messenger that everyone's throwing out right now? Oh, Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. We'll yes. get like, you should try Matrix. <laughs> they just pop up and they're like, who's Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Matrix whatsoever. Yeah. It's just the fan base has got a, uh, the it's very the arch enth of uh, enth enthusiastic Internet relay yeah. communications. Hey, you're Matrix. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. What, what I was really, uh, you know, saddened by, but yeah, it, it was just a little creepy, is Freenode in their statement. They actually stated it's a new genesis for a new era. Thank you for using Freenode and hello world from the future. Freenode is IRC. Freenode is FOSS. Freenode is freedom. <laughs> Freenode is dead. Mm -hmm. Yes, Freenode is dead. Sen, it's just it's so annoying. <laughs> annoying. Then, you know, my question to them was, why did you not inform your bread and butter open source communities to what you were planning to do earlier instead of violently kicking them out? They don't care. That's why. Yeah. yeah. No, the, they were besmirching the good name of what's his face. So, yeah, scooch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, anytime I'm ever yeah. setting up any type of online community and um, you're looking for moderators and take this to heart, kids, if you're in this position, like who wants to be a moderator? And everyone who raises their <laughs> hand, never let them be a moderator. This guy <laughs> who took over, he wanted to be a moderator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now he can moderate <laughs> himself huh? and uh, two or three people that remain. I, I, I simply, we, we've been over that. I'm not going to rehash it, but the logic behind this, what to be, I'm 
going to be watching this simply because I want to see what's the end goal here. What is the end game there? I refuse to believe this was just smash. Now he's going to throw money at the yeah. problem. I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know for what, but he's going <laughs> to. One of the things about IRC, though, free open protocol. Bounce where you need to go. Yep. And everybody, yep. I, I feel bad. Liver it up, chat. Yeah. Pound Linux yeah. game cast. <laughs> uh, shit is nice, too. <laughs> so, Vivaldi, I noticed, had a 4.0 release. I have um, that repository for Debian. But also an update last week. Might have even been before the show last week. And, of course, before I installed anything, I, I just went over and read a little bit about it. And they were talking about, hey, we got a bunch of new features like Vivaldi Mail, Calendar, Feed Reader. <laughs> which I was thinking to myself, well, I'm just going to uninstall you, Netscape Communicator. I've been through that trip before, and I'm not doing it again. But to their credit, you know, if you're going to talk about something, you need to play around with it. I went ahead and installed it, and I said, well, let's see how bad it can be. Turns out it's not bad at all. The first thing it <laughs> greeted me with was, hey, you want to do the light version? Just a browser. Do you want to add this other stuff on? It's up to you. Like, Okay, well played. Mm -hmm. Then I said, would you like a dark theme? Why, yes, I would. <laughs> Click. Even yes. Firefox asks you for that now. <laughs> yeah. It gives you a theme <laughs> thing, like, at the, on the first run. That's huh? beautiful. I was, I, I got to give them credit because they did not try to push the calendar mail reader, RSS, and all that other stuff. And they're, they're proud of it, but. They didn't go the Microsoft approach of like, it's yours now, deal with it. Um, <laughs> good job on that. Uh, what else? You know, like all things of all date, it looks and functions like a normal web browser as long as you disable all the whiz bang nonsense and everyone has the, ah, go away. And it will. Good on that. One thing I don't yeah. like about this announcement, though, is the... Um, creepy surveillance, fear-mongering right here truly with the new Vivaldi making it easier to break away from locked ecosystems of the huge corporations and creepy surveillance and then I went and read that I'm like what, what's going on something new I'm like oh you're talking about an FTC like information request I think that is the bit of news the FTC is finally going okay maybe Google and Microsoft and Apple and them are uh, being a bit creepy they made a request, mm -hmm. and to which I'm saying, if Lock. FTC makes that request to anyone, you're going to go, okay. I mean, one thing, I yeah. will never sit back and defend Google in any way, shape, form, fashion, but they tell you on the 10. Like, by the way. Yeah, no, it, it used to be the whole do not be evil thing, and that got scurried away with a quickness. And if you didn't <laughs> think that that meant that, yes, that means that they're going to be evil from now on, just completely unashamedly so... <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. Yeah. <laughs> Jill, what do you think of Vivaldi? Oh, I had a lot of fun with it, actually. I The translate works great. So when you go to a website that's, say, in German or French, a pop-up comes up asking you if you want it in English. And you say yes, and it works great. And it's, it's their own in-house uh, translator and um, it's powered by Ling Ve Venex, I, th I believe is the name. <laughs> but I was really impressed with how well that worked, and it's nice, nice not to have to rely on uh, Google's Translate or Siri or Microsoft's. So, and, and that's what Vivaldi is trying to do. They're trying to get you out of the proprietary um, Big Brother ecosystems. So that that's a really good thing. And I, you know, uh, Vivaldi is one of my favorite uh, Chromium based browsers because it's independent and very privacy conscious. And that was something else that it, it brought up when you launch it. It asks, gives you uh, privacy control options, which was also really yes. nice. Good on you, Vivaldi. And, and it I am using that for show notes <laughs> for right now. <laughs> yeah. I think Pedro is the too. one that I have the links <laughs> open. Uh, but yeah, yeah the um, I was reminded of just how annoying the uh, translation thing. Okay, maybe uh, there's not a whole lot of people out there in the world that can read five languages without needing the help of a translator. Okay, <laughs> but 
<laughs> I that annoys me greatly, and it's the first thing. It's like, oh, you actually have a little tick box to not suggest translations anymore. Google, take notes. You could have done that yeah. like ten years ago. That would be <laughs> <Yes>. nice. <laughs> Are you talking about just like globally or what? Yeah, globally. Yeah. You can just tick the box and it doesn't show you the thing anymore. Let's see, we need to focus more on the galaxy it's an brain opt out. What I need is <laughs> one that I can pick the languages I need translated. I think they all let you do that to a certain degree. You just have to do it manually. Uh, no, no, I want like it's the checkbox. Uh, okay. <laughs> just the ones mm -hmm. I don't know. You have enough information on me. Hey, Google probably does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So something we've talked about a couple of times is, well, I think the internet and everyone, when are we going to get a, first it was a Linux smartphone and Pine's kind of working on that and a couple of people, a couple mm -hmm. of other projects, they're trying. <laughs> Tablet, tablet's been a thing. Pine kind of did that, but he, I mean, also good luck getting one, but also, mm. Jingpad is something we brought up as... <laughs> Yeah. Not necessarily a budget alternative, but a very strange thing, a premium Linux tablet. A good looking yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is yeah, this is very exciting. The Jingpad A1. It's uh powered by Jing OS Linux and is the world's first consumer level Linux tablet. You know, we've been talking about here on LWW over the last few months, has launched their Indiegogo campaign. And it's it's really cool because the San Francisco based Jingling Tech, not surprisingly, has well surpassed their flexible goal of 20K at just over 55K with 61 days left. Yay. So uh, it starts at five hundred and forty nine dollars and that gives you the Jing pad and the Jing pad pencil. And I thought that was you know, we knew it was going to be a little higher price because it's going to be a quality product. And it looks like it is. It so looks beautiful, huh, Pedro? How much is that in t-shirts? Uh, is that five t-shirts? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so five so and that a half t-shirts? Five point five t-shirts? Okay. Yeah. So uh, on their campaign, one of the first levels is there's a t-shirt at $99. Um, for ninety nine dollars, it's a bit <laughs> steep, though. Mm -hmm. It's a bit steep. It probably should have been about fifty, but that was their their starting option, and it goes up from there to five hundred and forty nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I was really impressed with the videos. Um, the Jing Pad A one looks beautiful, and I love how it magnetizes to the keyboard cover and folds up so nicely. It's just a great ultra portable, and very well done. It's beautiful. It'll be interesting. I'm always uh, their twenty thousand dollar flex school usually means that they have the devices ready. What they need to do is cover, you know, logistics, distribution, shipping, all that fun stuff. Five forty nine is a big ask for untested product. Also, hi Jingo S team. You follow me on the YouTube's, but <laughs> Pedro, since I know you're not going to get one, um, what are your thoughts on it? expensive it's too expensive <laughs> you can blame nvidia for that because ever since i spent 400 euros on the 970 three and a half gigs i refuse that that's my hard cap it's like okay that was my mistake i done goofed as did many many other people in the world uh so that is my hard cut off point now and that that that's even the pre-orders that you can set now for their uh, indiegogo campaign at 549 there's still too much. Uh, they say the final price, uh, judging from the uh, little strike through, uh, six ninety nine. Uh, yeah, it is going to be even pricier, but it does look good. <laughs> it 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 does look very very good, and I want to see it in action. Uh, I hope that uh, some of the uh, Linuxy uh, savvy people on the tubes actually get one to play with and maybe some of the less Linux savvy ones like Abers Nexus. Please play around with one of them and take it apart. I kind of yeah. want to see. Send me <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. Play with us. Yeah, as to how many times it's going to call home. <laughs> oh, here and we go. And it's nice out of the box. It runs all the Android apps, which is really cool. And Jing OS, for those of you uh, who haven't tested it, it's, it's very, it's, it's a ta it's 
It's an OS specifically tailored for tablets and touch. There's a lot of unknowns. Really well done. There's a good uh, specs comparison breakdown with the A1 at 549, Pine Tabs 199, 10-inch IPS 720p, uh, as opposed to the JingPads 11-inch 2K AMOLED. Pine phone doesn't count, doesn't count. Yeah, so... (laughs) (laughs) uh, This... (laughs) Okay, here's your. You can have a slogan free on me, cheaper than an iPad. <laughs> very true. Yeah. <laughs> and they have Jingos, which uh, did very much market itself mm-hmm. when it was first announced as the Linux based iOS replacement, iPad OS replacement thing. So. Yeah, no, it, it looks amazing. <laughs> it does. That screen looks good. The case, if it's anything like they show in the video for the actual produce units, it's awesome. The 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 the, the price though. <laughs> the price is see, I look at something like this, this is a laptop replacement. Yeah, yes. this definitely and you know what? Both. Um at the end of the day, I don't want a laptop that costs less than five hundred dollars. Yeah. Because I need something I can use. Unless you want to have a used ThinkPad. Five, six, (laughs) seven, eight, nine. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And one of them uh, will probably match the performance, if not handily beat the performance of the uh, Jing pad without even, you know, skipping the beat. (laughs) Highly doubt that. Also, I'm sure I've heard you complain about each one of those laptops at least once. Yeah, that one that yeah. I put together f- from eBay with the quad core eight thread, uh, three point two gigahertz uh, Intel i five ninety three fifty, and the thirty two gigabytes of RAM and the one terabyte SSD. Thank you, Strider. Uh, <laughs> can I throw? How many days of battery life do you think that has? Uh, that one has about sixteen hours. Full use. Full use. Actual mm-hmm. use, like browser open, watching YouTube videos, 16 hours. It's a 96 watt hour battery. That's it? <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'll take this. good for a laptop. Uh, oh, it's about a centimeter and a half, so half an inch. Half an inch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm about right here. 500 bucks. Um, I'm in the market for something like this. I've been in the market for about a year. Because my mobile computing is, you know, I, I'm not going to lug a laptop around. I don't have the need for a second desktop in my life. I have five PCs in here that I got to deal with. I don't want more throughout the house. I have a bunch of tablets around the house because I'm doing word processing, watching videos, media consumption, stuff like that. Heavy lifting. I'll come in here and light this place up. So a $500, you know, system like that, I'm interested in. I just am. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I am very curious. Point. It's just a price, though. <laughs> Five hundred dollars is a budget laptop. A new budget laptop. You can make all the faces you want, man. It doesn't change reality. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I like the device. I don't like the price. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a special coupon day. Maybe I'll buy you five T-shirts and send them to you. <laughs> Five and a half? Five and a half. <laughs> Five, one's not going to have a sleeve on it. <laughs> so there's been a fix of a seven-year-old bug. A bug that's so old, video cards were affordable. Uh, yep, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, video card, there was competition in the uh, video card market at that time, and then there wasn't, and then there was again, and then everything was out of stock. So that's how long ago that was. But yes, a seven-year-old privilege escalation vulnerability in Polkit was uh, fixed over the uh, past weekend. No, this was Friday. So yeah, over the past week. Uh, And yeah, basically, if you were on Twitter or if you were on any social media, all you saw were the FUD posts about (gasps) a seven-year-old privilege escalation discovered uh, on Linux. Yeah. See, the information that you're working off of is that it's already been patched. Can we not? Because it's already been discovered. It was discovered, apparently, like uh, three or four months before the fix was rolled out, as it should have been, you know, quietly to avoid people Mm -hmm. catching wind of it and actually started (laughs) making use of it. So, yeah, 
uh, and <laughs> they do, uh, you know, that, that's my bit of preaching is stop with the FUD. Nope. And um, the, <laughs> the uh, actual vulnerability itself was interesting the way they did it. It's basically you start a debus send command and then you kill it while <laughs> pull kit is in the middle of processing the request. So you need debus send, kill, and pull kits installed with most distros that come with system D nowadays. You have pull kit up and running. Yeah. And oh, look, you're root. Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> your <Ooh>. UID zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, I, I have to say this because the first time I read this article and I'd, I'd been uh, seeing all the tweets about this seven year bug is I couldn't help but think that the bug had a Vulcan pawn far and wanted to mate, but got nuked instead. Because <laughs> it was the seven-year itch. I just... <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I don't like Star Trek and I got that reference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was the first thing I saw seven years. All I was seeing is seven-year itch. <laughs> the seven-year itch. <laughs> there you go. So... VTubers are a thing. Yes, they are a thing. And we don't get a lot of uh, Linux-based ones because, well, let's face it, VTubers, they just want stuff to work. You and I talked about <laughs> like, this on Saturday's show. I ran across the project yeah. and I kind of wanted to share it because this has other applications outside of um, being some Weebatron 9000, like jerking around and... <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm sure there are many, many legitimate applications to this. However, it's going to be used for VTubers. <laughs> that that, that, said. It's called VTuber <laughs> Webcam. It's, it, <laughs> you can't walk around that one. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it, it, what it does is it uses the Panda 3D engine uh, and some other uh, bits of open source software to basically track your movements of your hands and your head and your face uh, via your webcam, which you can then add to your OBSs and whatnots and do your videos, do your streams, do whatever you'd like. The software itself is not open source, but it is available for Linux and only Linux at this time. Uh, so if you go to the Kitsune One itch.io page, you will see the download button. So go and uh, give the other fox uh, <laughs> the software developed by the other fox a try. It's, so is it it's, uh, um, just hands and um, hands, head and face. All right. Yeah, everything else it yeah, tries to interpret from a solid body where it should go, though you will have twitchy arms. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's is like the tracking stuff um, wireless at this point, I'm guessing, right? The sensors. It and sh you should only just need a webcam pointed at you. And if it can, ah. if the, um, the tracking library, what is it called? Media pipe. If it can spot your hands as hands, it'll go, which you know, in my case might get a bit yeah. confused. Okay, so I, I, I wanted some <laughs> trackers because I think about getting some ferrets. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, I think Media Plus hey. uh, or Media Pipe is open source, so you could probably get the ferret tracking going. Either that or I'm going to put it on a wiggly noodle guy. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool, actually. <laughs> that would work. That, yeah, well, that wouldn't be far off, actually. You could probably do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, well, the Microsoft Connect actually worked really well with that, so... This this should work well too, um, and it's it's cool because it uses the VRM um, 3D avatar file format for VR for 3D model import, and but don't be confused with the older VRML 3D web format from back in the day that I used to use in programming. I, I don't think um, anybody's gonna be like, man, that twenty seven year old thing that hasn't been used since. Man, I almost yeah. mixed that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it's it's miss it's it's VRM, not VRML. So <laughs> that's right. But, uh, All of you senior citizens, don't confuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's been tools like this that have been popping up everywhere since uh, VR chat has become so wildly popular. Popular. So it's good to see <laughs> that we have this on the Linuxes. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not gonna it mess is with it. Very, very <laughs> nice to see. It, it, it's yeah, VTuber is as mere as uh, clearly uh, <laughs> showing on our Discord right now. VTubers are fairly popular, and the people behind some of the VTubers are genuinely funny. It's just the kind of crowd that they attract are necessarily <laughs> there for the humor. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said the same thing about hot tubs. <laughs> ben, what are you saying about hot tubs? There are some funny I streamers. My whole life. There, are some, <laughs> there are some funny hot tub streamers. The ones that are deliberately taking the proverbial piss oh, out of the whole concept. That was my favorite. It's amazing. Thing yeah. Because I, that's okay. something I was, I guess, aware of on a side thing until Twitch came out and said, Hey, all right, we're just going to put you guys. That's right. Yeah. Everybody in your own category. Hot to I'm like, okay. Okay. What's this about real? And I sorted <laughs> it by lowest <laughs> views and people after my own heart were definitely there just playing games with green screened into a hot tub. Like, mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> well done. I can appreciate this. <laughs> Ambient noise with bubbles. <laughs> It's a hot tub, not an aquarium. <laughs> or a <time> yeah. machine. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to uh, go play with that and be the VTube thing, send us a link. I'll go watch it. Okay, that's the thing. Because I, I looked it up. I remember, you know, this is the genuine get off my lawn moment was they were, um, some show was discussing VTubers. We do online streaming. What's the VTuber? Is it some type of <laughs> new way of streaming on YouTube? Is it some new tech? Oh. No, that ocean cap stuff. All right. Bye. <laughs> Virtual YouTuber. <YouTubers>. Right. <laughs> I thought it was a new thing. And it's like, oh, that's what we're calling that now. Okay. That's cool. More power too. So I made a thing, everyone. Something I've been threatening to do for a long time. And that is teach you some things about OBS. And this is the first one in a series I'm going to be doing called OBS Linux Basics, and I'm going to be rolling through a lot of stuff. No goofy YouTuber nonsense, no rambling, just the facts, man. That's what I'm going to be throwing in your face. You know, I'm going to be starting off with what I've done here is just getting audio from USB, HDMI capture cards, and webcams into OBS, be it from a different system, be it from your console, or anything like that. Now, that might sound like a strange place to start. But I had to start with my one data point that is simply the most asked question I get, be it emails, mm -hmm. be it on YouTube comments. How do I do this? Because somebody's went out, they bought an HDMI USB, they can't get audio through it. And if you're new to Linux, you're not going to know about things like Pulse Audio. In Windows, you plug it in, more than likely, it's just going to work. You don't have to add a Pavu audio track, you know, using input capture and all the stuff that goes along with it. So this is just to help people out. Get them started. Get them streaming. Do it with a quickness. So I'm going to say give it a look if you're looking to play around with some stuff like this. But I do want your OBS Linux questions for help in future videos. Give me some ideas because the most difficult thing about this is trying to come at it from a perspective of someone who is new to Linux. I don't know what the tripping points are. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be hitting this. I'm going to be hitting virtual webcams. We're going to be hitting how to do self-monitoring, how to get usable audio effects, little things like where's game capture at? How do I install OBS? We're going to roll it all the way back. So uh, yeah, like and subscribe for real. I don't ever say that. We do in <laughs> fact have a YouTube channel that will help with discovery. The goal here is to cut down on these questions and get people doing it the right way. Because my way is the right way. No one would ever argue that. <laughs> it's, Ben's never wrong? wrong. He's just a different shade of right, and it's always just as infuriating. <laughs> this, this is the internet. No one's wrong on the internet, Pedro. A very... I know, I like arguing on the internet. <laughs> I mean, that, that is a time-tested quote from a great man. <laughs> His name was Abraham Lincoln. Oh, I, it's true. I saw okay. it on a JPEG. <laughs> you could tell it was from the olden times, all the other artifact mm -hmm. compression. Yep. So, uh, mm -hmm. hey, if you want to help us make more cool stuff and educational things, or maybe 
just want to toss us a few bucks for what we do. You can do that heading over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, we get a bunch of rewards. We get a bunch of different tiers. That's your jam. We get a discord. Come hop in that. And you can get that being a patron. You do it with being a Twitch sub. Uh, we have a pre pre super shows and Pedro, myself and Jordan do an extra hour of content. If you want to listen to that, you get access to that. Plus the live and uncut and podcast format. You get the video version. This show this is just the gooey middle. There's a beginning and end to all this, you know, in like an extra um, 45 minutes to this show. Mm. And on Saturdays, it's Goo. four hours long. <laughs> so yeah. if you're looking for background music on the cheap, that's a good way to get it. And it helps everything that we do. So thank you very, very much for supporting Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Ting. Right. This show Aww. exists because of you. Jill's yeah. here because of you. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. And as our Theron said, smash that bell, fam. He came up with that <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> smash but we that love bell you all. Fam. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. The, the bell on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> Ringy. Yes. <laughs> Did Twitch ever give a name to their bell? <laughs> it's because Twitch no. has a bell too. It's just, <laughs> it's a yeah, it has a. Wait, no, it does have a bell on mobile, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah the, the, the bell the heart is, is for just the for the notification. Um, yeah, the bell is for the notification. The heart is just the follow, I guess. Yeah. And then there's the subscribe mm-hmm. button. Then there's the line yeah. through the bell that you're like, is that subscribed or unsubscribed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the, what did the tooltip say? <laughs> Hey, the know. Google one's even more confusing. It it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> the Google one changes every once in a while. So but we were, we were more all prepared for the bells. We were, um, we went through the Google Plus bells of fire, yeah. basically. <laughs> <ringy. laughs> you have notifications. That's the one, the one thing that Google stuck with out of all the Google Plus stuff. Like everyone gets a bell. Like, all right, right on. Yeah. <laughs> So I was scrambling around. Normally I have a picture of a uh, pie doing something, but we just got to go straight into astronauts. Oh yeah. No, Yay. it's the pie in space. <laughs> and you probably saw this bit of news too, uh, because in the international space station, uh, there was a raspberry pie that was open for uh, earth submissions and about 15, what was it? Uh, 49,993 students created about 9,400 programs to run on the Raspberry Pi, and each re- uh, each program was run for at least 30 seconds, and the person who was in charge of it couldn't get a night's sleep. Well, I guess yeah. it's space. It's always <laughs> nighttime. You just have to look a different way. <laughs> but yeah, no, that is impressive, and yeah, you got your Pi code running in space. <laughs> if you were one of the lucky 15,000 students. Hmm. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> the Astro Pie has too much rainbow vomit, which keeps the astronaut from sleeping, <laughs> which is actually a good thing. <laughs> well, all the students, they have all of their data and their programs measured during this mission. Mm-hmm. And next step is to examine it yeah. and prepare it for some final reports and to brag to all their friends that they once sent code to space. Code to space. That's cool. <laughs> the results, yeah, the results project. will be out. At some point, but mm. we they say it's like at least 30 seconds for each one. So, all right. Okay. I think it's going to be yeah. interesting moving into a uh, generation, not necessarily this current generation, but the generation after that where space is going to be very much normalized. Oh, I ran yeah. in space and probably won't be alive by then, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the spirit. That's what I like to see. <laughs> well, it's, it's really cool also because there is other other Raspberry Pi projects in space, including one uh, um, horticulture where they were testing the growth of plants. Students were doing that. And that okay. was really, really cool as well. So it's, it's, it's always nice to see more of them. Plants in space is how we end up with a sequel to Little Shops of Horrors. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Raspberry Pi 400 support has been added to the Linux kernel. Yes, yes. Here it is. <laughs> Yay, I'd gotten this, you know, when they came out and got it, uh, pre-ordered it. 
But yeah, so now the Raspberry Pi 400 has mainline Linux kernel support with the upcoming Linux kernel release 5.14. And so now there can be support from all Linux distros if the developers take advantage of it, which is really, really cool. And as you know, there are some very unique things about the Raspberry Pi 400, which Pedro is going to tell you about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think the key point of what Joel mentioned there was... uh, If the developers, if, emphasis on the if, if the developers (laughs) uh, decide to take advantage of it, because they never do. (laughs) Which is annoying, but uh, there is a big community around the Raspberry Pi, the uh, typical credit card sized one. Pi 400 is the single most powerful one of them all, because it has a great big massive heatsink. On the SOC, mm-hmm. so go figure. Uh, the, uh, yeah. And besides that, uh, that very much allows it to run at a higher CPU clock. It has a different Wi-Fi chip. Uh, it yes. doesn't have the activity LED like the other ones do. And it has a power button. Mm. Yes. Uh, that an actual power handy. button. So, yeah, <laughs> the significant enough hardware differences that uh, someone decided, you know what, let's just put that into the kernel and you don't need any of the Raspberry Pi hacks. If you've ever tried to use Debian as a desktop uh, or, or Raspbian uh, as a desktop on the Raspberry Pi, you'll see the amount of Raspberry Pi kernel hacks that get downloaded oh, every now on, and then. That's the best book you mean <laughs> yeah. any update. It's like yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, uh, we know that this is going to break this hack, so we're going to disable this hack, run the update, and then re-enable it again. Okay. <laughs> But the Raspberry Pi 400, it's getting uh, proper mainline support, so that's awesome. See, the moral of that (laughs) story is treat your Raspberry Pi like a regular IoT device and never update it. Oh, no. Or, you know, treat it like a gaming device and update it every time you turn it off. (laughs) That thing's not even on the network, is it? Yeah. (laughs) Network, Pedro, thing in your hand, is it on it? Uh, yes, it's it's got the Wi-Fi's and it's got the uh, RJ45 connection here. Not what I asked. Is it connected to anything? Have you set up the network on it for any reason? Yes. Why? D- the Wi-Fi for downloading uh, stuff. Pedro, that will give you the brain Goodies worms. games. <laughs> <laughs> ISOs. Uh, Linux ISOs, yes. Linux <laughs> ISOs. All right, fine. I, I mean, you, you can't even get away with saying that one anymore. Uh, what, what's something we can still use BitTorrent to download? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Jill to drop her pie for 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's cool is, um, so yeah, the Raspberry Pi 400 uh, clocks in at 1.8 gigahertz. And I did overclock this. I got it to 1.95. And I'm a little, I know people have, yeah, (laughs) I know people have brought it to to, uh, two gigahertz, but I've been a little wary about doing that. Yeah, no, the the one person I know that has one of them tried to overclock it and couldn't go above 1.85. Really? So Mm. you got a good one. (laughs) Yeah. I got this one clocked at two, um, but I got active cooling on it. So yeah, just got over voltage. Slam it and be like, yeah. it'll deal with it or not. Again, it's a pie. I'm like, oh, I caught on fire. I'll buy another one. <laughs> yeah, no, that one, uh, that Pi 4 plays PSP games at 2x scaling for the, um, what is the resolution of that monitor? It's like 800 by 600. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, 2x resolution for the PSP games and it plays them no issue. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> Mine runs the Stream Deck. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mine runs Vigi games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> runs RetroPie, which is a distro. And not Retro an SSD That's the software. To run the Stream Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one currently running in a uh, store, digital signage, that I helped set up. <laughs> Oh, so you actually put yours to use actual yeah. use. <laughs> it, was, it was the Raspberry. <laughs> it was the Raspberry. Yeah. It was my old Raspberry Pi A, but it works. Ah, <laughs> oh, the vintage Raspberry Pi. The kids with their new Pies, they, they, don't, they, they don't know the like smooth, real operations of the retro Pi. <laughs> the single core. I remember getting that. Mm. 
like everyone, can I use this as a desktop? It wasn't to use it. We didn't do that. We just wanted to see if yeah. we could get it to boot into a desktop. <laughs> and after much work, celebration was, mm, let's never do that again. But you did do it. That was kind of fun. <laughs> it's like, I need a GUI for the one thing. Just the one thing. <laughs> I just wanted to see if boot gnome, which it did this one. You know, quad core eight gigs. Yeah, just popped up. Didn't do anything. I'm like, okay, that's neat. Let's uninstall all that nonsense. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're going to bounce out of here. If you went and t- want to get in touch with us, how can they do that, Pedro Mateus? Well, mm-hmm. if you want to get in touch or went in touch, went in touch. Uh, you can absolutely <laughs> do that by going to uh, linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button. Uh, that's where you went in touch. And <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't be saying that because I uh, do screw up the English language a lot. In fact, I, if you watched yesterday's stream of Neverwinter Nights, genuinely no. sitting here thinking that was a good Man, one, Pedro. Saturday's gonna be rough on you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but yeah, you did no, an yesterday, extra long stream I, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, yesterday I um, the simplest words and I just couldn't pronounce them. But yes. LinuxGamecast.com contact button. Make sure you pick LWDW from the uh, little box that gives you all the different shows. Well, the two different shows and all the other options. They're pretty self-explanatory. And uh, if you didn't read the caveat at the top, that, that's your fault. That's on you. There. <laughs> that wasn't so hard. That wasn't so hard. All right, everyone. We're going to look at it. And we'll see you next week. Yay! <laughs> we did it! We did it, Van! We did it, Pedro! <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm sweating. Yeah, yeah. Hot. I am. I do have my air conditioner on because I had to. Because <laughs> my computer room would get too hot. Talk to me of your heat. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Van! <laughs> You know oh, why? Thank you, flaccid nerd. Have you have fun too? It's thirty degrees <laughs> outside. This is a little chilly. I need to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> thirty-two. Wow. Uh, still twenty-seven. <laughs> it, it's thirty-eight in Vegas today. <laughs> of course, that's normal for the summer. Oh, I don't. Yeah, know. it's thirty-eight <laughs> at zero percent humidity. Thirty-eight mm-hmm. in the middle of the <laughs> desert. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Thanks for showing up. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.